Hi everybody, it's Rebecca from Glorified Mud Pottery and Pottery Instructor for Monroe Walton Center for the Arts. So I came down to the pottery studio today because I have a class later on this morning and just started kind of looking around and found this old bag of clay. Now that happens a lot in pottery studios but it's not past the point where we can't do something with it. Probably wouldn't throw with it at this point but I can hand build with it. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be hand building a small piece. So let's get this piece of clay on the slab roller and uh, get started. So coming over here, we're gonna start our hand built piece on our slab roller. So got my clay here. I'm gonna open up my slab roller really wide to start my piece. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my clay rolled out. Put my clay in between my two pieces of fabric and we're gonna get rolling. Now with this particular slab roller, every time I come back and forth, I'm gonna spin my wheel a couple times. It's gonna lower my uh, two rollers on my slab roller to get this thing a little bit straight. So let's just get, give me a couple seconds here and we'll get this part done for you. We have our slab and we are ready to get started with our project. Let's go. Okay, so I've got my clay rolled out and um, I've decided that I'm going to make a little box. It's cute, hand built. It's not too, too hard. And um, I've got a good amount of clay, so this will work for us today. So let me show you the um, tools that we're going to need to uh, make our piece. We're gonna need a rubber rib, a pottery knife, a square cookie cutter or a round cookie cutter, whichever um, shape you decide you need. I use a scratch tool. You can um, use a pin tool to scratch or um, a bamboo, bamboo skewer. A texture roller, a little bit of water so I can make slip, and a paintbrush. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to gather up some of my tools here, move them out of the way for a second, but we're going to take our rubber rib, okay, and we're going to wisp it across the clay, like this. What we're doing is we're rubbing out all the texture that the piece of canvas we rolled it out on put onto the clay. I'm not particularly fond of that, so we're just going to get rid of it. I'm going to flip over, and we're going to do it again. So, like I said, it gets rid of all the texture on there. It also helps compress the clay, which um, when we get into the drying process and the firing, it's gonna help keep it from cracking. So go ahead and rub all that out. Okay. Get rid of that. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna um, put some texture on our box. Now, if you have um, doilies, you can use those to put texture into the clay. I'm just gonna use a texture roller. This particular one has ferns on it. So I'm just gonna put it on my clay and I'm just gonna give it a roll down the clay in a continuous motion if I can. And get us a nice strip of, in this case, ferns down the piece of our clay. I'm gonna lift up on my clay, lay it back down. So when I start cutting things out, it won't stick. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut out my rectangle out of my clay. And pull that up. And I'm gonna set that kind of to the side just for now. Done with that one. Now we need this. Okay, so for our next um, piece that we need, we need to actually cut, which would be the band that we're gonna to use to make the sidewalls 
of our vessel. To do that, we're just gonna cut a strip. Now, when we cut our strip, we are not going to cut on top of the canvas. If you cut directly on the canvas, you're gonna mess up your canvas and you're gonna have to buy new. So let's just get some of this out of the way real quick. We're gonna lift up our piece of clay carefully. Get that canvas out of the way. And we're gonna put this back down. We're gonna use just the top of my um, slab roller as our working surface. Now, if you don't already have a template out for this piece, you can use this little trick. I'm gonna cut a strip as long as I need it for my piece, and I'm gonna just use the cookie cutter as a measure, and I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, so I know I need to be about that long. So now I'm just gonna cut my rectangle nice and long. For this, you might also want to use a straight edge so you can get your bottom as straight as you can. We're going to do the same thing for the top part. Just cut a nice long strip out. Cut that there. Cut this off. And you can cut the um, overlap because you want it to go um, probably a good inch to two inches past your mark because you want it to overlap when they join. And I'm just going to cut a circle there, or a half circle rather, in my piece. So now I have what is going to be the wall to my vessel. I'm going to flip that over. And now we're going to start um, assembling our piece. So, I have my strip and I have my rectangle. I'm going to take my scratching tool and I'm going to scratch the bottom strip of my piece all the way to the end and stopping right before I get to the curve. On my rectangle, I'm going to go all the way around. And I'm just going to scratch that up. So all the way around, just get it scratched up well. I'm going to take some of my water solution over here. And I'm gonna take a paintbrush. I'm gonna go back and forth across the bottom of the piece where you can see it's starting to create some slip. Slip is like clay glue. It's gonna be what keeps our clay together. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water all on all four sides of my rectangle. Like so. Make sure you get it good and wet. And go down one more time around the bottom. Now, I'm not gonna start when I, I'm gonna start wrapping my strip around my block, my block of clay that I cut, but I'm not gonna start at the end corner. I'm gonna start maybe a third of the way in. A third of the way in right here. So, I'm going to take it back, I'm going to see that it's adhered, and I'm going to walk it around the corners of my piece. I'm going to go one, two, pressing and getting all the air out that I can while I work my way around, okay? I'm going to go up the side, and then I'm going to flip my piece down. From here, I'm gonna start tapping the base of my piece, making sure that my corners are all adhered. Okay. And now I'm gonna attach 
my front to my back. So, let's try it. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to scratch this up because I want to scratch where the piece is going. And then I'm going to come over here and scratch up what is going to it. So where it's going and what is going to it both get scratched or scored. And then they both get some slippy water here. Attach and attach that to your front. So now we have a cute little box that we have made. Get those corners perfectly set up. Go ahead and square your corners off if you want to. The next step is sort of um, up to you and kind of a personal preference. I like to add um, a piece on the flap to look like it's connected. So for this particular piece, I just cut a circle with a mini circle out. Um, for this one, I think, Hmm. I think I'm just going to do a button. So for that, I'm going to cut a square, because I'm going to make a square button, out of my clay with my potter's knife. You can make any kind of buckle. You can even buckle or badge that you want, but I'm going to mimic with my rectangular shape here. And I'm going to give it a rectangular button. I'm going to smooth that all off. Again, scratch where it's going and what's going to it. Add our solution. Attach. Make sure you press as much air out of the back as you can so the air can release. For our last step to this piece, which you as can see, as you can see, is a very, very, very simple piece. And quick, quick and simple. We're gonna flip it over to the bottom. We're gonna double check our seam and make sure it's all pressed and sealing correctly. And it is. And I'm going to give my piece feet. To do that, I'm going to make four balls of clay approximately the same size. Okay? So here's one ball of clay. And I'm going to press that down. Put that down. And then I'm going to get another ball of clay. We put that down, that one's a little bit bigger, so we pinch off. Back. It's two. This is three. And number four. Just right here. And to make sure that they're all the same size going onto the box for flatness, I'm going to use my rib. I'm going to put the balls a little closer together. I'm going to push down on a little bit and give a little smush down to where I know that they are all pressed at the same height. I'm going to add them to the bottom of my box. Scratch, scratch. Remember, we're scratching where it goes and what's going to it. So we're going to scratch each one of our little balls here. Now I'm going to go back with the water. Three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to add my feet. Now when I put my feet on, I'm going to put it on the corner and I'm going to give a little twist. 
I'm going to press all the air out from behind the ball and make sure it connects. And I'm going to do that to all four. And there you have it. All four feet are connected. I'm going to flip our box back over. Tweak our sides a little bit. And there you have it, a cute little pottery box. Once it's dry, you can go ahead and bisque it and I'll go ahead and good, give it a good glaze and you will have the cutest little box you've ever seen. I hope you learned something good today. Bye-bye.